The following program contains strong language and mature content. Viewer discretion is advised. Today on an all new Dr. Phil. I was trapped in a religious group for nine years and kept as a sexual maiden. She claims as a child she was given to an alleged cult leader. Everything that a wife would do, we had to do for him. And says her father knew what was going on. It made sense to you to turn your 13 year old child over to this creep? I didn't know all those other things were happening. In statements to the police, you said, I knew he was having sex with my daughter, but I didn't want to be an outcast. I would never have done that. And dad and daughter. You still don't own this, do you? Overcome their past. When you were into your 20s, you didn't know it was happening, and nobody Are had anything. Are you trying to blame me? It always feels like you're trying to blame me for what happened. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. Go, Dr. Phil. Okay, take a look at Lindsay in this video. She's laughing, playing, having a good time with her family. But just a few years later, at the young age of 13, she says her life would take a tragic turn and she would become a maiden, a maiden. And when I say maiden, you have no idea what that is going to lead to because this man right here was a leader of a religious organization. His name is Victor Bernard and she was one of 10 maidens that was in a religious sect called River Road Fellowship. Take a look. The search is on for the former leader of River Road Fellowship in rural Pine County. He's a former minister from Pine County, Minnesota, who reportedly led a cult and kept a group of girls as concubines. 52-year-old Victor Barnard is charged with 59 counts of criminal sexual conduct. According to investigators, Barnard began having sex with girls as young as 13, telling them he represented God's flesh, that it was okay and not to tell anyone. Was able to use, you know, spiritual coercion, spiritual intimidation, and he took advantage of that. After 12 years of abuse, one of the girls told her story to investigators. Victor Barnard fled the camp with some of his religious followers and with police in pursuit. Washington State Patrol is searching for the former leader of a Minnesota religious cult. After leaving Minnesota, Barnard's last known location was near Spokane, Washington. A nationwide search has been underway for Barnard since April. The Washington State Patrol says they received a tip yesterday that Barnard was at a McDonald's in Raymond near the Washington coast. Well, Lindsay says Victor called for all firstborn girls to be sacrificed onto God and move into his compound, Shepherd's Camp, where they would be on rotation to perform wifely duties for him. When we first moved to the Shepherd's Camp, there were about 80 people living on the grounds. Victor gave a teaching to the church that in the Bible, the firstborn children were to be sacrificed to God. Victor listed off 10 girls' names that he wanted as maidens. When I was selected as one of the 10 maidens. I was 13 at the time. All of us girls lived together in one house. Two girls would be assigned to assist Victor and we'd be on rotation. We would go in to wake him up in the morning and hand him his towel after he showered. We did all the sewing, cooking, cleaning, gave him massages, cut his hair. We even cut his toenails. Everything that a wife would do, we had to do for him. Well, in this case, everything a wife would do included being intimate even at 13 years of age. Victor had a ceremony with the 10 maidens and all of our parents were there. He had us all wear veils over our foreheads and he gave us rings to wear on our ring fingers. He would dip his finger in a dish of salt and then put it on our tongue and then he would 
put salt on his tongue. And it was signifying that we were spiritually married to Victor. My parents witnessed the salt ceremony. It was clear to me at that moment that my parents weren't going to stop it. Victor brought me to the lodge when I was 13. He proceeded to tell me that because he was Christ in the flesh, his way of showing God's love to me was to sexually take care of me and that it would be natural and spiritual and that even though I would have sex with him, I could remain a virgin. I remember feeling very scared. I didn't want to do anything to make him mad because I didn't want to be hit again. Throughout all of this, I was convinced by Victor that I was blessed by God and chosen, and somehow this was right in his eyes. In the beginning, he would have sex with me, sometimes at five times a month. There were times when Victor would have sex with me and he would get mad at me because he said I wasn't being passionate enough with him. And it kind of became to the point where if we were doing well in his eyes spiritually, that's when he would have sex with us. I was trapped in a religious group and kept as a sexual maiden by Victor Bernard for nine years. Well, Lindsay, I'm glad to meet you now under this circumstance where you're here and not still in that situation which you certainly could be and others still are correct yes including some of your family members mm -hmm. how, how do you feel about the fact that they're still in his clutches it saddens me it makes me very upset it worries me i miss them you talked about this salt ceremony where this was essentially a, a wedding ceremony, correct? Right, yes. And your parents were there. Your father stood in, in that ceremony. Yes, my mom and dad were both there. And what did you think at the time? At the time, I was very confused on why they had allowed all this to happen. I had been crying myself to sleep at night because I missed them so much. I couldn't believe that my dad and mom had agreed to let me stay with Victor after he told them that he may or may not have sex with me. You said before this ceremony, he met with your parents and had the clergy with him. And you said, I was 14 and Victor told the parents that he may or may not have sex with us and went through the different verses of the Bible to prove that it was okay. He said that um, Jesus Christ had Mary Magdalene and other women, and the Apostle Paul had Phoebe and other women when he went into Asia, and that it would be spiritual and natural for him to take care of me in that way. Why, why do you think that your father didn't say, wait a minute, you, you may or may not, you're, you, you're not going to have sex with my 14-year-old child? I think my dad was maybe afraid he was a coward. Um, I don't understand how he couldn't protect me. How he just let something like that happen. But he did. And, and you believe he knew it? Oh yes, I believe he knew. Yeah, well. Lindsay has not seen her father, Carmen, in a year. And we're going to find out why he says he believed that Lindsay was actually blessed to live at Shepherd's Camp with the alleged cult leader, Victor Bernard, because the father is here and he wants to talk about this. We'll be right back. The maidens were these young girls in service to the church. Lindsay was one of the youngest. That was considered a privilege for her and for us. I had no indication that she was in danger at all. And later... I was a child. You and Mom allowed it to happen. Into your 20s, you didn't know it was happening. Are you, you trying would. to blame me? I'm not blaming Th you on well, anything. Well, that's what it sounds Nobody... like. That's what it feels like. It always feels what? like you're trying to blame me for what happened. Victor reproved me for gaining weight and said that he would no longer have sex with me until I had lost the weight. When he told me that, I felt very ugly and unwanted. It made me feel very bad about myself. At that time, I wanted God and Victor to be pleased with me. Well, that was Lindsay talking about how alleged cult leader Victor Bernard 
punished her for gaining weight. Now, Lindsay's father, Carmen, says he believed it was a blessing, a privilege, for his then 13-year-old daughter to be one of the alleged cult leader's maidens to serve him as a representative of Christ in the flesh. And he had no idea that she was being abused. Victor presented himself as someone who was to be the man of God to the church. Many people that followed him started calling him an apostle. The maidens were these young girls in service to the church, and in serving him was considered service to the church. Lindsay was at the time 13 years old and one of the youngest. That was considered a privilege for her and for us to do that and partake of this program. Through those years, we would see Lindsay at least once a week. She seemed very happy. I had no indication that she was in danger at all. First time I realized that something wasn't right was when he called my wife and I in, talked about a scripture that he had in the Bible concerning the women that were unmarried and if they wanted to have sexual relations with someone, that he would have the responsibility of taking care of that. It was not easy for me to go up against Victor, and I felt like, almost like I couldn't do anything, almost in bondage. A fearful thing came over me. Lindsay lived under Victor's counsel and direction for nine years. My relationship with Lindsay right now is very strained. She probably has an issue with me not protecting her. But if you don't understand how mind control works, and how that manipulation really gets to a person, that's what it did to me. Well, the first time Carmen and Lindsay have seen each other in a year is right now. So how do you feel seeing your daughter right now? Right now, Dr. Phil, I, I feel overwhelmed. It's been a year since we've seen each other, and during that time, there's not a day goes by that I don't count the cost of realizing that I take my full accountability and responsibility for what had taken place. But you really don't, because you, you tell her that you didn't know what was going on at the time, right? Correct. And you don't believe that. How, I'm, how could you not know? You and mom took salt when you guys got married, and you saw Victor taking salt with me, with a veil over my head, with a ring on my ring finger that he had given me, and he did a teaching that said that the ten of us are more than concubines. And then the meeting that he had asked, that he said that he may or may not have sex with me, I was only 14. How, how could you not know? During that meeting, he told us he went through scripture and he tried to prove through scripture that he would have responsibility of fulfilling this action if later on at time, during the later on in your life, if you still wanted to be unmarried and serve in the church, that he would have that responsibility. And I disagreed with him if you remember that. And I did not give a blessing or an okay. So then why did you just leave me there? I felt like I was manipulated into his power. And then he told me, Carmen, I am not saying that this is going to happen. And therefore thinking in retrospect, there again is his deception for loyalty. What I remember from the meeting is Victor saying he may or may not have sex with me. And th no, even if you did disagree with him, you didn't do your job as a father. You abandoned me. You left me there for all those years. You saw me humiliated and kicked out of meetings in front of the whole church. I don't understand why you keep saying you didn't know what happened. And, and the way your family has treated me has been so awful. People telling me I need to stop playing the victim and become a survivor. And I know I still have a lot to grow, but I am a survivor. I had asked you years ago for forgiveness. And you told me that you don't know if you could forgive me. And... But you still don't own this till today, though, do you? I, I listened to everything that you've said, and you said, look, people don't get it. If you haven't been under mind control, if you haven't had somebody isolate you and take control of your mind and, and, and tell you that you have to do this or you're not being faithful to God, then you can't understand this. Let me tell you, I understand mind control. I get what you're saying. And you cannot abdicate your role as a father. 
and, and you cannot tell me that you became so blind that you let someone distort the scripture so badly that it made sense to you to turn your 13-year-old child over to this, this creep? I didn't know all those other things were happening. You really thought if he was bringing it up then that he would wait till I was legal? It makes no sense. And later, if some guy comes up to me and says, hey, Christ in the flesh here. To me, it's not a laughing matter, and it is absurd. I it is absurd. It is a laughing matter because it is so absurd, it's ridiculous. I want to look at some of the email exchanges you've had because I think it says a lot. You, you've written to her. You have reached out. You, you said, Dear Lindsay, I respect your request for needing time and space. But in my heart, I just needed to write you. I take full responsibility for having you and our family in the dangerous situations and atmosphere that we were in, and particularly you. I failed to walk away with you clutched to my arm, not only in that first meeting where VB made those preposterous and devilish suggestions and questions, I spoke the truth to you when I told you that I did not know that those things were taking place with you and I did not give my blessings. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing him talk out of both sides of his yeah, mouth there. you totally contradict it, yourself. I, I, I spoke the truth when I told you I did not know those things were taking, but I did not give my blessings. So right. you either turned her over or you didn't. What do you mean? You, I, all right, I give you my daughter, but not my blessings. You can have her, but I don't bless it. What well, the hell does that mean? My perspective was that she was serving in the church. I didn't know all those other things were happening. If somebody came to you and said, I was 14 at the time, at that time, you really thought if he was bringing it up then that he would wait till I was legal? It, that's just, the, it makes no sense. That, I mean... I don't understand because that's what he told me. Well, let me tell if that's true... Are you saying that that would be an arranged marriage? I'm just going to turn you over and when the clock ticks 18, have at her? No, 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 what, no. What the hell's that? My biggest mistake was to trust the wrong man. And when he told me that this, I, I'm not, Carmen, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. Even after an age of 18 or so, I still didn't give a blessing. But all of her indications, all of her notes and things that were telling me that she was enjoying where she was. She was a that child. She was, even in 18, 19, 20 years old, I was oh still God. getting these letters, and I don't understand that, you know, if somebody, Lindsay, do you think for one minute, being as a father to you, that I, if I knew that you were getting abused or hurt in any way, that I wouldn't come, and, and that would jar something in me? I know that it would. It would well, have. Well, it obviously didn't, because Victor made it clear what he was doing. And I, I have no idea why you well, can't... But it, it didn't because I, I looked at the excerpts from the probable cause statements uh, with the police. Father said he felt that was wrong, but he felt pressured not to say anything against Bernard and didn't. Right. It says you felt that it was wrong. You knew it at the time. You say looking back on it now that he knew Bernard had sex with his daughter when she was a child. I knew? I did not know that she That's had what sex. what you told the police. After Lindsay told me I knew, I didn't know that he had sex with you before that. It says, I looking back on it now that he knew Bernard had sex with his daughter when she was still a child. He said he did not know what he was thinking at the time, but just remembers always feeling so much pressure to not become an outcast and lose everything he had. So I knew he was having sex with my daughter, but I didn't want to be an outcast, and if the price to pay was her, then I would pay it. That's all that no, means to Lindsay, me. I would this, never have done that. I would never well, have done that. This is how you've treated me since I left. The night before I had the meeting with the FBI, you called me and you said, I don't know what you're telling people, but I'm losing friends over this. Like, you're more concerned about your reputation than, than what I went through. And you would say that you, you're the loneliest man on the earth and you feel like your family has left you. When I didn't have any of you guys around when I was 13. And I'd see you maybe once a month at a big church meeting, but I always had to have a chaperone with me. We were never allowed to speak alone. 
I mean, you said I seemed happy, but how did you really know? You weren't in my life. You didn't know that one summer I had one skirt and two t-shirts to wear all summer long. That in the winter my boots had holes in them, so I had to put newspapers in them so my feet would stay dry. Honey, Just... I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But isn't it your job to know? Yes, it is my job to know. Isn't it your job yeah. to know? You don't turn that over to the church. You don't, you don't turn it over. Some guy comes and tells you he's Christ in the flesh, and you say, oh, well, okay, here's my daughter. I, I'm sorry. I don't buy it. My daughter's not worth being an outcast. No. When I spoke to the official, when I spoke to the sheriff, that was after Lindsay told me what happened. And then I knew what was happening because she told me. I didn't know before that, and I'm telling you, I didn't know. If I would have known, I would have pulled you out immediately. It would have jarred me into some sense, some thinking. I don't understand how you couldn't have known. And I didn't understand what happened either then. All right, well, let's take a break. Lindsay refused her father's invitation to move into his home with a very clear back the hell off. We're going to talk more about that when we come back. When I finally told my parents that Victor had sexually abused me for those nine years, I remember asking my dad if he remembered the meeting that Victor had when he asked for their blessing and he said he did remember it. It made me very angry inside that he never said that he was sorry for letting all that happen to me. I consider what Victor did to me rape and molestation. From the times that I saw Victor and my dad together, it was pleasant. They seemed like they were friends. Even after my father knew what was happening to me, he did not fight for me and did not get angry at Victor for abusing me. I felt abandoned. I felt mad at my dad for leaving me there. There was Lindsay talking about how her father, Carmen, allowed her to be abused by alleged cult leader, Victor Bernard, who has been charged with 59 felony counts involving criminal sexual conduct and is currently evading law enforcement. They're looking for him. But Carmen says his daughter always talked about how happy and blessed she was to be living with Victor at Shepherd's Camp. So he says, look, the only input I had was from her. And she was saying, everything is fine, so I had no idea. I, I, I had nothing to react to, right? Correct. And in fact, one of the things you said was, how could I help when there were no signs of a problem? That's your quote. How, how could I help when there were no signs of a problem? Well, I, so I made a list of what I thought were red flags that, that I, I thought would jump out to anyone. Number one, it was all about him. He, he described himself as Christ in the flesh. Correct. Is that not, you know, if some guy comes up to me and says, hey, Christ in the flesh here. <laughs> to me, it's not a laughing matter and it is absurd. It is absurd. It is a laughing matter because it is so absurd, it's ridiculous. When somebody says that to me, it's like, really? Really? You're Christ in the flesh. You're Christ in the flesh. I, that to me, wouldn't that be... It, it, it's, it's, it, absurd. Okay. You saw Christ in the flesh spit in people's faces. We were all at meals together. You saw him spit in people's faces. Eighty people at a meal. He would get up. People were not doing what he wanted them to do. He would get mad and spit in their faces. You're telling me you never saw that. I don't remember ever seeing him spit in anybody's face. I don't. Yes, he did. He made radical interpretations of scriptures that you knew well. Right. Bring me your firstborn daughters. Exodus 13, 2. Don't say that. <laughs> That talks about the sons of the Israelites. It doesn't talk about, it's, it's the first from the womb. Sons, animals. It doesn't talk about, bring me your daughters. That's not a red flag to you? That that's a distortion of what it says? It is a red flag, and it was distorted, and I felt manipulated into believing him. He managed by intimidation and ultimatum. You knew that, correct? Yes. Give me your daughters. Ten maidens to go with me. 
Ten maidens. He threatened banishment for failure to comply. Right? You, you do what I tell you or, or, or you're out. Right? Right. Your gut told you not to give your daughter over to be a maiden. I felt like I was just blinded. Did he say to you at one point, and this is a quote that you gave us, she isn't your little girl anymore? He did. She you know how many be. times I wanted to pull you out of there in my right mind thinking, I don't belong here. And how many times I voiced to leave that place through all those 10 or 11 years, and I had not one backup from Lindsay, from, and you were there at those meetings where I wanted to leave and, and leave and go home. Dad, I was a child. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. You and Mom allowed it to happen. And when you were even 18 and 19 and 20 years old into your 20s, you didn't know it was happening. And nobody had anything to come to me Are you with. trying to blame me? I'm not blaming Th you on well, anything. Well, that's what it sounds nobody... like. That's what it feels like. It always feels nope. like you're trying to blame me for what happened. I'm being blamed right now. I'm being blamed, and I take the responsibility for what happened and putting my family in that situation, and I take the accountability for that. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. Uh, you are giving her a message of blame, and I'm apparently giving you one, and, and I don't intend to because... There's a difference between blame and responsibility. Okay. Blame implies intent. And Carmen, I do not believe that you ever had a bad intent. To be responsible, you only have to have taken or failed to take necessary action. And that is what applies to you. You are responsible for abandoning your daughter to this creep. And this child is a 100% victim. Now, we're going to add somebody to this conversation in a minute. There's actually a co-founder of this fellowship, River Road Fellowship. He's here. We're going to find out what he says he witnessed that made him wonder if Victor Bernard was sexually involved with his maidens. We'll be right back. Victor is very charismatic. He always initially comes across as very caring. There was definitely affection displayed with the maidens. As time went on and they got older, more and more. Victor abused me from 13 until I was 22. Everything that he did was terrible. Victor is currently on the run and I hope he pays for what he did to me. I cannot wait for Victor to get what he deserves. The co-founder of River Road Fellowship, David, says he began to question whether alleged cult leader Victor Bernard was having sexual relationships with his ten maidens after he witnessed Victor's outward expressions of affection towards them. My name is David, and I used to be friends with Victor Bernard. Victor is very charismatic. He always initially comes across as very caring. The original intent and in what was shared about the maidens was not to serve Victor, but uh, the practical taking care of the camp. There was definitely affection displayed with the maidens. As time went on, and they got older, more and more. And it was about him trying to take a role of like more of a husband. It came to my attention and a number of other people's attention that Victor had been sleeping with some married women. I wrote a letter and confronted him over multiple things, including that. One of the things that I stipulated in the letter that his relationship with the maidens was completely wrong. I came to the point that he was actually a sexual prowler and that he basically was trying to sleep with every woman in the ministry. Today, I consider Victor Bernard an extremely evil man, a pedophile, a sexual prowler, and one of the most disgusting individuals I've ever known. Victor deserves to be brought to justice and spend the rest of his life in prison. Well, David is here. You thought, okay, so this isn't Christ in the flesh. This guy's doing things that are corrupting the spirituality of this whole fellowship here. And so then you have to look and say, oh my God, he has these 10, some of them children living with him. So at that point, why not call the authorities? When I sit and hear Lindsay's story and all the things that took place, there's probably 75 to 90% of it that I had even nothing, zero recollection about. Like even when the way, the, to me, how this whole maidens developed, there was... Uh, Oh, the older ones were 16, 17, 18 years old when it started to develop as a group 
It clearly appeared that they were pursuing that, that they were wanting to basically remain unmarried. Then younger ones wanted to kind of follow suit, and that it was all being initiated by them. And when they first came in, quote, as a group, they were there for a few months, kind of like almost a summer, summer camp. It was never a permanent thing. I didn't even personally even know anything about, quote, assault covenant. So a lot of the things didn't seem at all like they really were. So what do you think about Victor at this point? He is one of the most evil, disgusting, perverted people I've ever come in contact with. You think he should be tracked down and prosecuted? Oh, that's what I've been fighting for for five years. Uh -huh. um, now, when you decided to do the show, you told us that David started to contact you. That's correct. And you were uncomfortable with that. Right. She told us you were calling her. We asked you not to contact her well, further. Well, nobody told me that. In fact, if there's anything, um, I was asked the question, have you talked to her? And that was the main reason why I even uh, was checking. Why, why were you calling her? I didn't even know what the show was about, so I wanted to actually just see how she was doing and, and try to get a little bit more clear about what, what, what the... What well, you, you, knew what the sh you knew what the show was about. Well, I, I, no, I didn't know specifically that Carmen Weeman was going to be here. Nobody told me, so I had no idea. I'm being a little protective and a little careful here because of her experience sure. before and, and your history before. And this is Amy Jo uh, the, and the producer and, and Leticia. Uh, so, Leticia, there, there's some question here about what took place. And I, I want this young lady to have straight information from us for sure. So what took place? Absolutely. Um, we were informed that David was contacting her. And when I communicated with David, I let him know, first off, why are you contacting Lindsay? And there is no need to contact Lindsay if he has any questions to give me a call. And after that, he said he wanted to reach out to her to see what she was going to say. They were going to communicate. And I said, there is no need. There is absolutely no need to communicate with her that I, I will be the the communication process. I'm just wanting to be sure that we're not, again, giving her muddled, confused messages in any way. Right. Uh, of you saying one thing I, and you I saying just, something else. I feel else. so bad right now. The whole, from the time that I was communicated to with on Friday about coming out here, for me, I thought I made that very clear with Leticia that it was, had one main purpose was to hear, to, to, to support Lindsay. You did mention that your intent was to help. And you mentioned to me that you were one of the ones who helped kind of push forward the movement of connecting with law enforcement and that you were, you were a voice to help. And I, I did say thank you to that. Yeah, and uh, law enforcement has said as much as well that you've pushed this forward uh, with regard to Victor. And you, you really don't want to have contact. It's difficult for me to have any contact with the adults from Minnesota because it brings up abandonment issues, why nobody said anything. You will respect the fact oh, that... Oh, absolutely. Right, we're going to take a break. Is anyone besides Victor liable in this situation? We're going to talk about that when we come back. The State Patrol believes it has a strong tip that might lead them to an alleged cult leader, 52-year-old Victor Barnard, who reportedly kept a group of girls as concubines. Victor is the bad guy. I have been made to feel by friends and even relatives that I'm the bad guy. And I feel like I'm just getting beat up. And I can take it. I don't have a reputation to uphold, except that I'm God's kid and Lindsay's father. I still have nightmares every night with Victor. I have flashbacks often of Minnesota and what happened there. I could see a mom and a girl walking down the street and feel upset and angry and sad all at the same time. I would like Dr. Phil to help me to learn how to become at peace with what happened to me and that my nightmares would stop. There are charges and allegations against Victor Bernard. Uh, I want to talk to um, uh, CNN legal analyst Sonny Hostin, who's a good friend of mine and a good friend of the show here. Sonny, first, it's good to talk to you. How are you? 
I'm well, Dr. Phil. Thank you so much for having me as always, um, especially on this, such an important, important issue. You know, I, I know you're not in the blame game uh, and the blame business, Dr. Phil, but I am in the blame business because as a lawyer and as a prosecutor, that's what I do, right? I, I look for blame. I look for responsibility. Carmen, even if you didn't know, the law provides that as her father, you should have known. And sir, you certainly should have. You used your daughter as currency to become a member of that church. You made a deal with the devil. And that is a horrible, horrible crime. Lindsay, that's the way you feel, right? Yes, that's exactly the way I feel. And, and, and Lindsay, you're right. And, and I want to say this to you, Lindsay, because I've worked with so many survivors of child sex abuse. And I want to call you a survivor, a victor, because that is what you are. You are so great, so great to have gone to the police with your story, to be here today sharing your story with all of us. And in doing so, you are protecting so many children. You have no idea. And I applaud you for being the brave woman that you have become. And let's talk about Victor for a minute. This man has one count of first degree sexual conduct with a person under 13 years of age. 45 counts of felony first-degree criminal sexual conduct by a person in a position of authority with a person between the ages of 13 and 15 and 13 counts of um, felony third-degree criminal sexual conduct by a member or purported member of the clergy. These are serious charges. Sonny, if he gets captured and prosecuted uh, for these charges, what kind of time is he looking at? There's 59 counts here. Many of the counts carry a prison term of 30 years in prison per count. And let's remember, Dr. Phil, this is only for his abuse of Lindsay and one other girl. So if he gets prosecuted, he's never going to see the light of day. Okay. All right. Sonny, uh, thank you and stay with us. Uh, Carmen says he wants my advice on how he and Lindsay can heal this relationship and be a family again. I want to know what Lindsay has to say about that. We'll be right back. All right, so my Twitter followers are having a heated discussion about this topic. Mad Jay's mom says there is so much denial by so many who need to step up. This poor girl has more strength than these men put together. <laughs> Sherry Lee Adams says these adults would do well to pray for the victims and forgiveness for not stopping it. Angelina says any adult who insists to be alone with a child is a red flag in and of itself. Now, what do you want? Right now, I would like my dad to give me my space. I would like to learn how to eventually be at peace with knowing what my parents did to me. At this point in my life, I don't want you in it. I, I want you to allow us to make a, a gift to you of bringing that help to you, to give you the clarity and the strength that you need to do the things that you need to do, just as our gift to you, you. allow us to, to do that for you. Will you let us do yes, that for you? Yes, thank you so much. We, we very much want to do that for you. And, uh, well, Carmen, I, I strongly suggest that you allow us the, the time and space to bring your, your daughter this help because as she grows stronger and has a better grip on who she is, her chance to find the strength to forgive and redefine a relationship with you is just going to go greater. And I'm going to also offer you some help here because I, I believe that at this point you are not being authentic with yourself uh, about what your ownership in this situation has been. And if I get you that help, will you take that help? Absolutely. I mean, you need help in, in doing that, and I will do that. And, um, and 
Sonny, you've worked so much with these kind of victims, and you have seen them, women with much less ego strength than we're seeing from Lindsay right now, climb up from the ashes and stand on their own two feet. People do get better from this, correct? No question about it. And, and, and again, I mean, Lindsay is so remarkable. She is the type of person that will be victorious in this kind of challenge. Uh, I, I thank you. Um, Anyone with information regarding Victor Bernard should call the U.S. Marshals Communication Center at 1-800-336-0102. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to CNN analyst and host, Sonny Hostin. I really appreciate you, Sonny, for being here. Log on to drphil.com. Share your thoughts on our message boards. Uh, you can always find me on Facebook or Twitter uh, using hashtag Dr. Phil, hashtag facing the past. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me give her some help with this and you as well. Okay. David, thank you so much.